Hello and welcome to the program. My name is Marie Yambo as usual or social media handles at Marie Yambo at KBC Channel 1 on Twitter, KBC Channel 1 TV on Facebook. Today we'll be talking about technology. We are coming to you from the Medicon, Africa Asia Health Dynamics Lab, where we'll be learning about a particular technology that is helping doctors to make not only quick but accurate diagnosis right at the bedside of the patient. And joining me to talk about this is none other than Patrick Miruka. He is the development manager at Mediscan. Welcome to the program. Thank you so much, Maria Yambo. Maybe you could tell us a little bit about uh, what uh, Mediscan does. So uh, Mediscan Africa Asia Health Dynamics, basically what we are, we are a resource platform for medical professionals and mostly we conduct uh, doctor's training this is a short courses as well as continuous medical education. So we tailor make the training to be able to help the doctors acquire some vital skills that are life saving for the patients. So basically that's what we do every day to empower the doctor to treat you better. Um, what is the point of care ultrasound machine? What is it all about? So um, point of care ultrasound, our POCUS as it well, it's well known, Basically, we use it at an emergency scenario. So this means uh, the doctor needs to be um, empowered to be able to have the skill. He can be able to use a machine, an extension of a stethoscope that can be able to give him um, power to make very important decisions before he can be able to ask for further investigation. So now that means uh, as a doctor, either you are a cardiologist or you are a um, a cardiolo uh, you are uh, dealing with chest issues, also you are maybe dealing with um, abdomen issues that come to you, you can actually be able to use this machine to check your patient um, at the bedside without necessarily asking the patient to go to a radiologist or uh, a sonographer or a radiographer to do those uh, scans. However, we always say that this is for uh, quick diagnostics or quick, um, empowering you for quick decision. But there is room, there's a big room for further investigation. So we have a, a cardiac that they do. We have the, uh, of course, the um, abdomen, and also we have the liver that they check when they are running this uh, point of care ultrasound. So, you know, in, uh, in the past, the stethoscope has been in use you know, to, uh, to diagnose, especially, um, you know, whether at the bedside of the patient or uh, at emergency care. But right now, the point of care ultrasound has come in. So are we essentially saying it's time for the stethoscope to take a rest and the POCUS to come in? And what is the difference between the two? Yeah, so uh, as we move towards a more evidence-based uh, diagnostics, so these machines are very vital to be able to give uh, accurate um, diagnostics. Stethoscope, it's, it's very important, I'll say. However, there's not so many uh, people are accessing this machine. That's why people now have the stethoscope. But we, as we go further and more hospitals and more doctors acquire ultrasound machine, I'm sure the stethoscope are gonna take a small role in this, uh, in this uh, scenario. So that means we can be able to use machines to get evidence-based uh, diagnostics. So there have been cases at times where, you know, um, Kenyans have gone for imaging yeah. and um, when, you go, when you go for a second uh, opinion, you find that the imaging is actually different, you know, for whatever reasons. So why is it important for you to have medics trained on how to use specifically the POCUS? Yeah, it's because, um, as you well know, that uh, we, have, we, we work as, as different cadres or as different specialties in the hospital setup. We work as a team. This means a nurse has a role to play, a clinical officer has a role to play, a general practitioner has a role to play, and a specialist has a role to play. We want to empower general practitioners, medical officers, different uh, specialties to actually have these vital skills because the, the first point of care or the first point of contact for primary health care comes to the first doctor, which is either they will find a medical officer, they will find a clinical officer, and in some scenarios they will find a nurse. So that means these people need this information to save lives. 
yeah, in a, in a trauma setting, in a, a specialist setting, then when they have found that there is some issue within whatever they are looking for, now they can be able to ask for a further investigation. So that's why it's very important because in our setting, if you did an accident, for example, you're going to find a, a, a practitioner at the emergency level, you most probably won't find a specialist there. You need that person to be empowered to handle you correctly, accurately, for a better outcome for your condition. Okay, so Mr. Miruka, probably right now you can actually show us how uh, the ultrasound machine works. Yes, so basically we have uh, different uh, probes in, the, in, in, in this uh, machine, like this is uh, an ultrasound machine, basically has uh, different probes, like this is a cardiac uh, uh, probe. So these probes, uh, mostly, you can be able to scan the patient, who is uh, now our model here. Uh, I will not go to the details of scanning uh, at this moment, but basically we, we are able to use this probe to scan the patient and we can be able to observe if it's cardiac, we can be able to see uh, the issues in the heart or we can see what's happening there. So we can be able to see, um, do they have any issue? Is this a normal, um, a normal heart, ETC? So I will not go to much details to the training. So this is basically what happens, or maybe they can see the abdomen, in the abdomen areas, uh, what's happening there. They can also be able to scan the liver as well and be able to check. And then that patient uh, is able now to be correctly diagnosed for if there is no issue, then we'd say perfect. The patient gets a, a, a quick diagnosis. If there is something that is being suspected to be serious, and then we ask this patient for further referral to be done more scans to understand what is the issue. So there are concerns uh, in some quarters that uh, you know radiographers or sinographers uh, uh, may be taken out of work, if I may put it that way. But that aside, are there limitations to what the point of uh, care ultrasound you know, can do? Are there any limitations or it can generally just do everything like any other machine? Um, the POCUS machine, the limitation is only uh, because this is for primary healthcare setting or emergency setting. The limitation only becomes that when, if we suspect, for example, if you have a, a chest issue, we have to run most, more tests because we can never use one test to a certain, like a conclusive um, decision. But if we check, for example, you are your heart is okay, then that means we don't have to do unnecessary further scans on you or further test on you. But this machine is very important in terms of telling us, is your vitals okay? If they're not okay, then it gives us a very important information. Then now we can be able to send you for further investigation that is actually accurate. So many Kenyans uh, incur a lot of costs when it comes to the diagnosis you know, of their ailments, one of them being imaging. So how do you think that this uh, ultrasound machine will actually help in cutting costs if there's any? In our, in our setting is a, a very serious issue in our setting. Because remember, our healthcare system, who are the healthcare practitioners that run that system? We have to remember we have the clinical officers, we have the medical officers, and also we have a specialist. However, in most cases, you will never find a clinical officer in a small hospital in a rural place. So if you did an accident, for example, you're going to find either a clinical officer or a medical officer. So if that medical officer does not have this skill and you came to him, he cannot help you at that particular time. That means he has to send you somewhere for imaging. Now, what, why it's very important in our setting is we are saying, even in a small, small rural hospital, if they acquired a, a, an ultrasound machine, they are empowered to handle trauma cases or those emergency cases that come to them. Uh, their clinical officers or even their medical officers can be able to check and see what kind of uh, issues their patients that are coming in an emergency setup are uh, experiencing. And then they can make um, treatment schemes that are better for them. But then this machine, we just use it 
to be able to know if the issue is okay, we don't have to ask for more imaging. But for us, the most important is the capacity or the skills for the hands-on skills, the person being able to use it correctly is the most important. So the facilities not so many of course uh, have, I will say. However, now we have to do acceleration between training and maybe hospitals now find the need to acquire the machine for helping them in that setup. So I'll say training, very important, because even if I had this machine and I'm not able to use it, then it becomes useless in a healthcare setup. So we want to able to have the machine, maybe getting the machine is easier, but being able to use the machine and having the human resource or human capacity for health to use it is the most important thing. So me, I would emphasize, let's train more healthcare professionals to be able to use machines and give correct, accurate diagnostic. Thank you so much for staying with us. We've just uh, spoken to Patrick Meruka, who has explained the training in as far as the point of care ultrasound is concerned. I'm now joined by Dr. Bridget Nyabuto, who is a medical doctor with an interest in oncology. Thank you so much for coming in uh, to the program. And uh, let me start by asking, um, how has the point of care, you know, ultrasound revolutionized your work? Now, um, the whole point of point of care ultrasound is to enable the physician make decisions for a patient, pick out lesions, make almost spot diagnosis, like right at the bedside, yeah? So it has in effect um, helped in that you're able to spot things uh, that would have otherwise taken a long time. Let's say with this tool, you can easily pick fluid in the lungs, what you call pleural effusions, escalate to um, a pulmonologist, for example. With this tool, you can immediately pick out a pericardial effusion, that's fluid around the heart, for example. Yeah? Same thing for fluid around the abdomen. Basically things that would have taken um, your clinical acumen first and then sending them out to either a radiologist or a radiographer and then waiting for a radiologist's report before you can um, plan your next course of action. So it's in effect shortened um, the time between when you pick the diagnosis and when the intervention comes around. So we know that um, in most cases, you know, the time it takes to diagnose, you know, a patient is very, very important. So when it comes to the use of the POCUS, you know, how important is it to shorten that time for the patient between, you know, coming in for consultation and the real diagnosis? Oh, it could easily be the difference between life and death. Case in point, pericardial effusion, that's fluid around your heart. And once there's fluid, your heart cannot pump. Rather, it cannot expand, contract appropriately to supply your body with blood. You get, so this is um, decisions that have to be made, like almost spot on, and you intervene. You know, just, uh, just as you have already explained that it is very important to shorten the time between when a patient walks into, you know, the doctor's office and the diagnosis itself. So, you know, with the use of the POCUS, how long would you say now it's taking for diagnosis to happen? Because remember, initially you're using the stethoscope you know, where you could just listen to the sound. But right now, you have the benefit of uh, POCUS or the at least point of care ultrasound. So how long is it taking now, at least, to give real-time um, diagnosis? Um, very, it's pretty interesting to answer that. It honestly depends on which hospital setting the patient is in. I mean, case in point, our public systems, they're overwhelmed, so ad auscultate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. So adosculted, for example, pick out a mama that doesn't sound too friendly, then send this patient to go on a queue much of the time to get an echo done. So they've gone home, they've tried, found their resources, come back, waited another maybe two, three days. Decisions were not timely. Decisions were not spot on. So it's, it's changed. It's Others have done, um, others have gotten timely intervention because of this. So you see something, for example, you see what you don't like on echo, 
sent straight away to a cardiologist. You're, you're cutting out, let me use the word middleman, but you're cutting out very many other consults in the process that are time consuming. You, you know, the, um, there is this, uh, I don't know whether to say it's a talk or there's now this belief that this stethoscope is actually going to be, you know, put aside and now we're going to be using the uh, point of uh, uh, care uh, ultrasound. Maybe you could tell us whether that is possible, but what is the difference between now, you know, using the, the stethoscope and uh, the point of care? So Saturn as the sun, we still use this. Huh? <laughs> now this focus comes in to augment this. Huh? Now both of them are very user dependent, meaning um, my level of acumen, my level of skill is what would enable me to pick something. Um, let's say I'm listening to you, lungs for example, I feel, um, cross crackles at the bottom or I feel reduced heart sounds in one place. So I have to like go further, do something we call percussion, you know, make you say nyama nyama while listening and all that. And you see my deductions, it could be a consolidation I'm missing, it could be a consolidation I'm assuming it's fluid or it could be fluid entirely that I've missed. You get, so that's how initially it used to be. I pick something of the sort that I suspect, I send you for imaging which could be, let's say, um, a HRCT chest, for example, or if I'm suspecting a blood clot, I send you for a CTPA. Now, to get that done, I need to know your kidney is okay because I'm going to give you contrast. You get, so if your kidney is not okay, part of the radiology team might not be very excited about doing that. So there's normally a back and forth. It can take up to three, four days. But now with this, I can always see what is going on and then in effect, objectively, even start empiric therapy, like start treating, you know, anticipatory treatment. That's, that's what we call empiric therapy. So something broad spectrum, an intervention that is broad spectrum that can cover whatever I'm suspecting based on this. Okay. Yeah. So it augments your clinical acumen. Mm -hmm. It does not replace this, but augments, adds on. Because picture somebody, let's say, in... Um, a remote part, um, I don't know, maybe some island, the only access you have there is a boat that comes once or twice a day. You get, you have to send that patient from where they are, send them all the way to Kisumu, for example, or send them all the way to Kisi Town just to get an imaging report, which that process is significantly shortened by this. Could you share with us some of the uh, cases that you've come across in terms of uh, management uh, using the, the point of care uh, ultrasound? Oh, um, by now, you see I have a tendency to favor in fluid in the lung, yes. fluid around the heart. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, we've picked two pericardial effusions that would have otherwise taken you know, an entire go over the weekend, then you're booked for Monday. Yeah, we've picked two pericardial effusions which got sorted out and in a timely fashion, courtesy of this. Also in my world, you get sometimes with metastasis to the lungs, especially fluid comes in. So mm -hmm. it's easy to pick out with yeah. this. But that being said, you need somebody very well trained. There has to be a capacity building of sorts. People have to be helped access these skills because again, it's ultrasound it's also very user dependent. So if you don't know how to hold the probe, at what points to search, you will miss out. So are you seeing um, you know, your colleagues in the health sector embracing this technology? Yes, it's, it's coming on slowly, but it's catching on. You know, it's slow, but it's catching on. And a lot of my colleagues, at least the ones I even took the course with, um, are very appreciative of the skills they've picked. I mean, let's say things like um, ectopic pregnancies, for example, that's when um, you get a pregnancy and then it's maybe in the tubes and then it ruptures. So this is somebody bleeding on the inside. Initially, we used to rely on what you call paracentesis, you know, like I get in a syringe and a needle, suck out, yeah? Or alternatively, to be able to clinch that diagnosis, you somebody has to go to the ultrasound room, which was basically negotiating for them. You know, the way you're even sending a request form, you send it, you know, it's an all red urgent. You're literally almost pleading because the queue is long. And this is somebody who's bleeding, hypovolemia is setting in. You know, with this, um, somebody is able to actually do it on their own. You know, you pick out something very fast, intervention 
yeah, you escalate it maybe to your gynecologist or even go into theatre yourself. Um, same thing for ruptured appendicitis, you can pick up. Then for accidents, this is what we call FAST, that's a focused um, assessment using ultrasonography that again helps you detect is there maybe um, a rupture of a vessel in there, is the spleen okay, is the liver harmed, is the patient bleeding, you see things that are um, things that are very time dependent, decisions that you need to make instantly. Yeah? So this has brought it closer. It's shortened the process significantly. Mm -hmm. So you know when um, somebody comes into the doctor's office, they are always sent out to do uh, you know, tests, imaging being one of them. And uh, it's very costly for Kenyans really to you know, go for MRIs or CT scan and all that. Are you seeing uh, POCUS as one uh, area or technology that is going to cut costs? Because by the time I come into your office and uh, you're doing a diagnosis, you have the advantage of POCUS right by my bed. So would, would you say that it actually is cutting down on the cost for uh, patients? Okay, yes, yes, to a large extent. If you're looking at it in terms of the patient being able to have a one-stop shop from your diagnostics, your workup, you know, one-stop shop and the intervention, your reviews from that point. But the point of the billing, I'm, I'm not very sure on that one. But anyway, that being said, for example, somebody comes in, I'm suspecting a cardiac lesion, I would not now go pay, no. If this is there at my disposal, I would straight away intervene. I would straight away scan the chest, the heart real quick, get my views and escal escalate it. So it's, it's a good tool. I hope you've learned a lot in terms of how the point of care ultrasound machine works and how it's revolutionizing how patients are managed in hospitals. We hope to see you again next week. My name is Marie Yambo.